After these things, someone said to Joseph, Behold, your father is sick. He took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Someone told Jacob, Behold, your son Joseph comes to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat on the bed. Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a company of peoples, and will give this land to your offspring after you for an everlasting possession. Now your two sons, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine, Ephraim and Manasseh, even as Reuben and Simeon will be mine. Your offspring, whom you become the father of after them, will be yours. They will be called after the name of their brothers in their inheritance. As for me, when I came from Paddan, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way, when there was still some distance to come to Ephrath, also called Bethlehem. Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, They are my sons, whom God has given me here. He said, Please bring them to me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he couldn't see well. Joseph brought them near to him, and he kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I didn't think I would see your face, and behold, God has let me see your offspring also. Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near to him. Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. He blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. Let them grow into a multitude upon the earth. When Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. He held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. His father refused and said, I know, my son, no. He also will become a people, and he will also be great. However, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his offspring will become a multitude of nations. He set Ephraim before Manasseh. Israel said to Joseph, Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you, and bring you again to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Jacob called to his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which will happen to you in the days to come. Assemble yourselves and hear, you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, excelling in dignity and excelling in power. Boiling over like water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed, then defiled it. He went up to my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are weapons of violence. My soul, don't come into their council. My glory, don't be united to their assembly. For in anger they killed men. In their self-will they hamstrung cattle. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion, as a lioness. Who will rouse him up? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he comes to whom it belongs. The obedience of the peoples will be to him, binding his foal to the vine, his donkey's colt to the choice vine, he has washed his garments in wine, his teeth white with milk. Zebulun will dwell at the haven of the sea. He will be for a haven of ships. His border will be on Sidon. 
Issachar was a strong donkey, lying down between the saddlebags. He saw a resting place, that it was good, the land, that it was pleasant. He bows his shoulder to the burden, and becomes a servant doing forced labor. Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan will be a serpent on the trail, an adder in the path. It bites the horse's heels, so that his rider falls backward. I have waited for your salvation, Yahweh. A troop will press on Gad, but he will press on their heel. Asher's food will be rich. He will produce royal dainties. Naphtali is a doe set free, who bears beautiful fawns. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine by a spring. His branches run over the wall. The archers have severely grieved him, shot at him, and persecuted him. But his bow remained strong. The arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, even by the God of your father, who will help you, by the Almighty, who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of my ancestors, above the boundaries of the ancient hills. They will be on the head of Joseph, on the crown of the head of him who is separated from his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he will devour the prey. At evening he will divide the plunder. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father spoke to them and blessed them. He blessed everyone according to his own blessing. He instructed them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite as a burial place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah, the field and the cave that is therein, which was purchased from the children of Heth. When Jacob finished charging his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed, breathed his last breath, and was gathered to his people. Joseph fell on his father's face, wept on him, and kissed him. Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father, and the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were used for him, for that is how many days it takes to embalm. The Egyptians wept for Israel for seventy days. When the days of weeping for him were past, Joseph spoke to Pharaoh's staff, saying, If now I have found favor in your eyes, please speak in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, my father made me swear, saying, Behold, I am dying. Bury me in my grave which I have dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now therefore, please let me go up and bury my father, and I will come again. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, just like he made you swear. Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, all the elders of the land of Egypt, all the house of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's house. Only their little ones, their flocks, and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. Both chariots and horsemen went up with him. It was a very great company. They came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, and there they lamented with a very great and severe lamentation. He mourned for his father seven days. When the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning by the Egyptians. Therefore its name was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond the Jordan. His sons did to him just as he commanded them, for his sons carried him into the land of Canaan, and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field as a possession for a burial site, with Ephron the Hittite near Mamre. Joseph returned to Egypt he and his brothers, and all that went up with him to bury his father, after he had buried his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us, and will fully pay us back for all the evil which we did to him. They sent a message to Joseph, saying, 
that her father commanded before he died, saying, You shall tell Joseph, Now please forgive the disobedience of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. Now please forgive the disobedience of the servants of the God of her father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to save many people alive, as is happening today. Now therefore, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. He comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph lived in Egypt, he and his father's house. Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were born on Joseph's knees. Joseph said to his brothers, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt.